What's up guys, Jack here, and welcome back to the channel. So today's video was supposed to be relatively straightforward. I was planning to boot up the new Destiny Rising mobile game on my ROG Ally, and my plan was basically just play the game on the Ally, show you guys some benchmarks and maybe some of the performance numbers I was getting. But as always with my projects, this unfortunately turned into like a week-long headache due to a decision I made in my previous Ally video. So for those of you who saw my last video on the Ally, you know that I completely overhauled this device. I added in a two terabyte hard drive, a brand new battery, an upgraded cooling plate, and most importantly for this video, I wiped Windows off of and reinstalled Bazite onto my new drive. Now, it was fine in theory playing Steam games. Pretty much my entire library is on Steam. I don't do too much emulation, so I was really happy with how Bazite turned out. But when this new Destiny Rising mobile game came out and everyone started raving about it, I knew I had to try and play it on my Ally. I'm a big Destiny fan, as you can tell from some of the other videos on this channel. And this is one of my favorite devices for playing games on the go. So I wasn't gonna let an incompatible OS stop me, but it certainly tried to. The main issue that I dealt with here was that Bazite being Linux-based supports some Android emulators, but doesn't support the official Mew Mew player that the developers of Destiny Rising recommended. So I tried all sorts of janky hacks on this thing to try and get it to work on Linux, and I eventually had to resort to dual booting Windows back onto this thing. Setting up a dual boot on a new system is pretty straightforward, but on a live system that I had already set up and installed all my games on, it was kind of a risky thing to do. I definitely would not recommend doing what I did if you don't absolutely have to, but I'm hoping this video would help somebody who maybe has Bazite on their ally, or somebody who has a Steam Deck that's Linux-based and wants to play Destiny Rising. Maybe this workaround would work for you as well. So with that, let's go over to the desk and I'll take you guys through the journey of me trying to literally play a phone game on this thing. Okay, so we're over at the desk and we're gonna go ahead and plug in a keyboard and mouse to make this setup a lot easier. So the first thing I tried here was just booting up Bazite, switching over to the desktop mode, and installing the Bazite specific Android emulator called Wadroid. This emulator is actually really good and has a lot of compatibility for games. And I like that Bazite has all the setup instructions included on its website. So I went ahead and initialized it, and then we're gonna go into the app search and search for Wadroid and boot it up for the first time. And it should boot into a screen that looks like an Android home screen. After that, go back to the terminal and go ahead and shut down the session with this command. And then we're gonna run that same command as the beginning, except instead of initialize, we're gonna use the configure option. Select your version of Android. I picked Android 13. I went ahead and installed it, selected my apps. The only one you really need here is G apps, which will give you access to the Google Play Store. And then after that's done installing, we can go back into the terminal and use this command to start Wadroid back up. From here with Wadroid running, go back into another terminal window, run that setup command again, go back to configure, select Android 13 again, and then we're gonna select the bottom option here to get Google device ID. It's gonna spit out an ID that you need to authorize your device with the Google Play Store, and you're just gonna wanna copy that down somewhere. After that, I went back into Wadroid, sign in with my email, and then I passed in that ID right here on this checkbox. Went ahead and hit register, and then I left for about an hour while this processed. I came back and it was ready to go. I just logged back into the Google Play Store and my device was fully authorized. So I went ahead to the search bar, typed in Destiny Rising, started installing the app, booted it up for the first time, and got to this screen. So I had seen a Reddit thread about this happening on Wadroid specifically. Not sure if it's a Destiny Rising specific issue or something with Linux compatibility, but it'll just get stuck on this boot screen over and over when you try and start the game via Wadroid. So unfortunately that didn't work. Hopefully they add compatibility for Linux in the future, but in the meantime, we're gonna have to go ahead and prep our drive for dual boot. So since I already have a live drive with Bazite here, I actually have to go ahead and prep an Ubuntu bootable flash drive. And this is just so we can get into a utility called Gparted, which we're gonna use to reallocate our drive so we can create a separate partition for Windows. I'm just using Belina Etcher here to prep the boot drive. Again, if you're doing this from a fresh install, you don't have to do all of this. You can just partition your drives properly and then set up a separate partition for Windows. Since I already have a drive here, you have to boot from a separate Linux environment in order to reallocate a drive that's already in use and you don't want to wipe the data off of. So we're going to let Belina Etcher do its thing here. After it's done, we're going to go ahead and unplug that drive from our computer, plug it into the USB hub connected to our Ally, and then we're going to reboot back into the BIOS. For some reason, Bazite wasn't working with the typical volume down button to reboot into the BIOS but you can use this command here to boot Bazite straight back into the BIOS. After that, I just dragged the Ubuntu USB drive to the top of the boot priority list, saved everything and rebooted, and you should boot into Ubuntu setup here. Now we're not actually doing a full install of Ubuntu. We're literally just using this environment to modify the partitions on our drive so we can create a separate one for Windows. You're just gonna walk through this setup here and instead of pressing install Ubuntu, we're gonna click try Ubuntu and that should boot you straight into the desktop screen here. From here, go to the top left and search for a utility called Gparted. This is the tool that we're gonna use to allocate that new partition. Inside of here, you want to find your main partition. I have that 1.82 terabyte partition that I set up in the last video, and I'm just going to knock that down by about 100 gig to create a section of unallocated space for the new Windows install. And I went ahead and created this as a new partition here. You actually don't need to do this. It's better to leave this as unused space. 
and you'll see why a little bit later in the video. So after you have that section of your drive partition, go ahead and save your changes. It'll give you a loading screen telling you that it's shrinking the drive down. For me, it's shrinking down from 1.82 to 1.72 terabytes. And then that's all we need from this Ubuntu drive. So go ahead and save everything, close out, and we're gonna go ahead and prep our Windows boot media next. So just go to the Windows 11 download site and click on the Create Windows 11 installation media. We're gonna plug in our flash drive here and select our flash drive from the dropdown on this screen. I had to reformat my drive in the terminal since I just prepped Ubuntu on the same one. But after that, you're gonna go ahead and download Windows and wait for that to complete. Okay, so after that's done, we're doing the same thing again, plugging the drive back in, booting back into the BIOS with the same command that I mentioned earlier. And then once again, we're gonna drag that sand disk from the bottom of the boot priority to the top. So we boot back into the Windows setup. Walk through the first couple screens of the setup. And then when you get to this screen, you're gonna wanna select that new partition that we created. You can see here that Windows 11 can't be installed on this partition because it's an unrecognized type. I believe it's something to do with Linux. So we're just gonna go ahead and delete this partition. And this is what I was saying about leaving that space unallocated. We're just gonna boot Windows straight onto that unallocated space and it'll create its own partition that'll be compatible with the Windows 11 install. So go ahead and select that unallocated space, hit next. And after you click through a few more screens, Windows 11 should start installing on the new partition. So this is a really stupid part of doing a fresh Windows install on the ROG Ally. It doesn't come with any of the drivers you need, including the network driver, which is important for the setup. So you actually have to use this hotkey to open up a terminal, and then you're gonna go ahead and run this command. I know I didn't do a great job of capturing it on video here, but run this command, and this will go ahead and restart that Windows setup. And this will bring you back to the same screen we were stuck on before, but now you have an option where you can click, I don't have internet to continue. Go ahead and fill out the rest of the information on setting up Windows. And and we should finally get to our new Windows environment here. So obviously, since we skipped that Wi-Fi step, we now have to go install the drivers. This is something that comes out of the box with ROG Allies, but since this is a fresh install, we gotta manually install some of these drivers. So head on over to this site here. I'll leave links to everything in the description. And we're gonna wanna start collecting these drivers onto a flash drive so we can manually install them onto our new Windows partition. Make sure you get this Realtek LAN driver, the one for the AMD chipset, the AMD graphics driver. And then this is the most important one, the MediaTek Bluetooth driver. This is what's gonna allow us to connect to Wi-Fi. After you have those all saved into a folder, drag it back onto your flash drive. You can disregard the cancer game I have on in the background. We're gonna go ahead and unplug that drive, plug it back into our Ally, and then start booting those drivers manually. Start off with that Bluetooth driver I mentioned. Even though it says Bluetooth, this actually controls the Wi-Fi function on the Ally. So we're gonna go ahead and do that one first. And once this restarts, we should be able to now pass in a Wi-Fi network. So go ahead and connect to your Wi-Fi, and then we can go ahead and proceed with installing the rest of the drivers. I would recommend restarting after each of these. I know it's kind of a pain, but this is kind of what you have to go through in order to do a fresh Windows install. And then finally, we're gonna open up Microsoft Edge, go to the Destiny Rising website, and then from here, click on Play on PC, and it'll start the official Mew Mew emulator download for Windows. Once that's done, go ahead and open that up and start walking through this. And you should get to this screen where you're able to install Destiny Rising. Now this probably took 10 or 15 minutes to set up for the first time, but after all of this loading and approximately three days of troubleshooting on my end, we finally get to the game running on our ally. Okay, so for the gameplay section, these are the settings I was using here. I have the rendering quality on max, frame rate on max, and texture precision on HD. So basically everything maxed out, default controller layout, and everything else I pretty much left default. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a frame counter here, but this thing ran smooth on the ally the entire time. You can tell from the visuals here of me just walking around the tower that this game just looks insane on the ally. The screen on this device has always been one of the biggest strengths, and I was just so impressed with some of the environments that the developers created here, especially for a mobile game. My camera's only recording in 30 frames per second, so it might look a little choppy at some points, but I can assure you guys that the game was running well over 60 frames most of the time. It felt really, really smooth playing, and honestly, it felt really similar to just playing Destiny with a controller. Um, I'm surprised how much they captured kind of the movement and the gunplay of Destiny. Destiny 2 definitely has a high standard for how the movement and the gunplay feels, and I think they did an insane job of capturing that in a mobile game here. And you can see from the visuals here of me drawing the sword in the tutorial, this game looks absolutely insane. I can't believe they captured this much detail in a mobile game. Again, I'm on maxed out graphics, maxed out everything. This thing ran perfect on the Ally. This really feels like the form factor that this game was built for, and it's kind of unfortunate that it doesn't work with Steam Deck out of the box. I'm sure that they're going to come back and fix that Mew Mew player and make it work on Linux in the future, because in my opinion, they're really missing a big market share by not addressing those customers. I've even seen LFG posts already on Reddit and stuff of people requiring players to not be using the touch controls, because Destiny players love gatekeeping everything, including a mobile game. In terms of my thoughts on the actual game itself, I haven't gotten in too far yet. I've only played through the first couple missions, but I was really impressed by the tutorial here. It actually felt more exciting to play than it does to play Destiny 2 at the current moment. There's been some complaints about the content being time gated, but the fact that they have so much new content developed for this game really shows that the developers put a lot of thought into 
it. And everything from the story to the guns to the characters to the enemies all has the same essence as the real Destiny games. And you can tell the developers spent a lot of time trying to capture that. I've been playing Destiny since the D1 beta, and I can assure you that this player base complains more than almost any other game out there. Everything that Bungie has delivered in the last couple years has always been missing a few key pieces that just barely make it miss the mark with the player base. This game was honestly so refreshing to play from all of that recycled content that Bungie's been pumping out for years. And I legitimately had that same feeling that I had when I played the Destiny 1 beta back in 2014. It really does feel like a completely new and revamped experience. I'd highly recommend checking out this game. And if you have a gaming handheld like the Ally, I think this is the perfect form factor to play it on. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to hear if somebody tried this out on their Steam Deck and got it to work. And that's pretty much it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.